Hello. Welcome to our LLT Lent Devotional Services. I'm Pastor Diana Google, and I serve as the pastor of the Lutheran Church of Our Savior and co-interim pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church. And it's great to have you with us here during this season. Throughout the season of Lent, our theme for these services has been created for community. Today's specific theme is community with those in the margins. First of all, I want to acknowledge and thank the community of folks that help us make these services happen. For the members of Calvary Lutheran Church for hosting us, for Dana Schuldas for providing music, and for Jennifer Hiles for her excellent film work. Also a reminder that if you watch this on Wednesday, Wednesday during the day, if you want to see it again with a group of people or you just want to gather for some soup and, soup and dessert, you can go to St. Peter's from 5 to 5.15 and that's when that begins. And if you wanted to go to worship and have communion, you can gather at St. Paul's at 7 p.m. Our service continues with the song, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Scripture is from Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, reading from the New Revised Standard Version. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. 
For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he rinsed apart and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send him out of the country. Now there was on the hillside a great herd of swine feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine. Let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told in the city and the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the first things I do whenever I open a document, whether it's a sermon, report, letter, is to adjust the margins. In Microsoft Word, I choose narrow. This pushes the margins out as far as they can be and still be printed and hole-punched. I do this because I want to have the maximum amount of space for whatever I'm writing. Margins are useful in many ways. They help define a space which enables us to function better. They can be an effective tool in writing. Sewing, patterns show us margins. Driving, showing areas which are safe or not safe. In parks, for example, protecting animals. However, like any tool, they can be misused. Margins in our context refer to people on the edge, folks who are pushed to the periphery, people who have often been and are often ostracized, separated from community. In Jesus' day, those people included those within the establishment who wanted to learn about him and were pushed to the edge because of that. Think Nicodemus. They included those whose job made them suspect, tax collectors. They included the generic label for some, which is sinners, those who have, some have deemed unfit because of certain behaviors. And of course, there are the outsiders, those not a part of the religious establishment or the nation of Israel, specifically Gentiles. And if you doubted how, those folks, how folks viewed them, just look at earlier translations of the Bible, where the Gentiles are called pagans. That implies just a bit of a negative connotation. In our day, who are those on the margins? They could come from a variety of groups of people. We have the mentally ill, refugees, immigrants, the poor, the unemployed, those living on government assistance. In some cases, people whose opinion is not valued or accepted some with certain illnesses, people of different sexual or gender orientations, people who look different or are differently abled, some black, brown, red, or yellow skin folks, prisoners at all stages of incarceration and rehabilitation. I'm sure you can add to the list. People in these groups are often pushed to the edge and are not included. Even now, people are trying to figure out what to do because a large segment of folks weren't counted in the census. Some of these people are even institutionally marginalized by election laws that exclude them. Others, we simply try to ignore. The theme today, in community with those on the margins, reminds us that what was true in Jesus' day is also true in ours. These folks are a part of our community.
We are challenged to follow Jesus, who throughout his ministry consistently reached out to those on the outside, desiring to bring them in. Some might even argue that it was this approach, this attitude, which led people to eventually kill him. The text which was chosen for this theme, as you heard, was Mark 5, verses 1 to 20. The NRSV calls our text, Jesus Heals the Gerizim Demoniac. The message simply states, The Madman. This story is the second largest and most complex of the exorcisms in Mark's Gospel. One commentator said it is a tale of terror. Imagine a man who howls off and on day and night. He's been taken over by demonic powers. He abuses himself. He cannot be restrained. He is utterly cut off from his community. <coughs> Enter Jesus, who begins by crossing the sea from familiar territory into the lands of the Gentiles. There are different opinions as to where this actually took place, Gergasa or Gadara, but the important point is this is foreign Gentile land. At the end, Jesus refers to the Decapolis, the Ten Cities. These would later become major ministry outreach places for Paul. We know this, that it's Gentile territory, because one of the main characters in our story is a herd of pigs, not something that is dealt with by Jewish folks. An interesting note, there is a political implication here as well, because legion refers to a Roman regiment of 6,000 soldiers. So there's a hint of casting off Roman oppression as well as vanquishing demonic spirits. So, first, Jesus leaves familiar territory and crosses over, literally disregarding a geographic margin in order to minister to this man. For us, dealing with our own people on the margins, we learn how important it is to see them. Failure to see folks enables us to discount them and not include them. We often do this because we fear diversity. We don't like to deal with people who we deem different, whether that difference is in appearance, lifestyle, or ways of thinking. For Jesus, it is enough that this man is hurting and needs help. So he sees him, and then he deals with him. Interesting how, once again, the demons know Jesus. When others don't always see Jesus for who he is, the demons always seem to know him and recognize the power of God within him. Jesus cast out the demons, legion, into this herd of pigs, and they plunge over the cliff into the ocean. One person said, while doing study on this passage with Iowa hog farmers, they pointed out lots of discrepancies and problems with this story. Whether or not hogs can swim, and apparently they can, is not the issue. The point is this man, totally isolated from his family, has not only his health, but his community is restored. Then Jesus sends him back to his family, physically and mentally healed, but also back into his community. During Lent, as I said in the introduction, it's all been about community. The relationships we have with one another matter. We've been created to be in relationship with God, our planet, and one another. Over and over again, Jesus encourages us to love God and our neighbor as ourselves, and then keeps pushing the boundary, expanding the margin of who the neighbors are. We are challenged to push the boundaries and reach out to those on the edge, find ways to include them. Will this be an easier or comfortable thing to do? Not always. Yet Jesus shows us time and time again that God's love, God's grace, is for all people. In order to be messengers, to not only share but embody that idea, we may need to cross over our own prejudices and preconceived notions about people who are different from us. We might need to fight years of programming we aren't even consciously aware of until we come against it. Yet we are called and challenged to not only step out of our comfort zones, but to expand the ways we see and relate to all people. Community takes work, but it is a blessing and a gift and the way God wants us to be. Amen. We continue in prayer. 
Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of community. Help us, O oh Lord, to expand it to include all people, especially those on the margins. And when it's difficult to do so, give us the strength and the courage to be able to reach out to people who are different, not only to include them, but so that we too might be blessed by their presence. We pray for the world in which we live, for all who are affected by severe and unexpected weather. The change of seasons can be a challenge for some, and there have been major weather events, tornadoes and such, in our country and around the world. We pray for all those who have lost homes and loved ones. We pray for those who feel shut out and disconnected, and those feelings in and of themselves may put them on the margins, always feeling as if they're on the outside looking in. Help us to find ways to include them so that they might feel welcomed and cherished. We pray for all who are sick, lonely, displaced, those who struggle physically and mentally, emotionally and socially. Bring people into their lives that can help them and make a difference so that all might be restored to themselves and to one another. We pray for all those who are caught up in battle and warfare, especially in the Ukraine. We pray for those who are trying to help them and for all those people who put themselves in harm's way so that there might be peace. We pray for all those who are grieving, for those who have suffered loss, that they might be comforted by your compassionate spirit. Help us to reach out to them in their challenging and difficult days. And may we all be comforted by the promise that you have shown us, the promise that Jesus walked this journey of Lent to the cross, died, and then rose again uh, for our sakes. May we trust in that and in your plan for each and every one of us. These prayers and those which are written up in our hearts, O oh Lord, we lift up before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>